a second on there. And that's all we have. And that's actually all we're going to need to find the slope here for that. Okay? Here's the thing. They've already done the heavy lifting for you, and they are telling you to find, sorry, they've already told you that this is making a line. A line between two points here. We want to figure out, well, what's the actual slope? So let's do what we did last week. How do you go from 10 to 12? What are you guys doing? Going up or going down? And how much is it going up? Yep, 12 minus 10, which is 2. And then let's see on the other side. How are you going from 0 to 3? Plus 3, right? Same thing, right? 3 minus 0 is 3, right? So that's all we need to do. Because they already told us it was linear. We just want to know what is the slope here, that rise and run. And we just calculate it by you determining the change in the y, which was 2, and the change in the x, which is 3. So when I write up this slope, oops, sorry, wrong button. When I write up this answer here, what we say is the rate of change, which is another way to say the slope. How do we write this up? Do we write up as 2 over 3 or 3 over 2? 2 over 3 to the y's over the x's, the rise over the run. This is the rise, this is the run. So our slope is 2 over 3. Okay? Always, always, always y is over x. Now, this is where our calculators are going to be kind of a little bit nicer. Let's do the same thing with number 2. Let's make a little new table for number 2. We should have some still some room on this page. And I want to do number 2 here. I'm going to do it in a different color just to draw our attention to that. And then for number 2, what is the first thing that jumps out for you about number 2 and the points we're using? Well, they're just not as nice points, right? We get decimal points. And this is where the calculator is going to be our buddy. Okay? I want to do the exact same thing. I want to calculate what this slope is. So I want to go and ask you that same question. How are we going from right here? 4.5 to negative 4.5. What are our eyes doing first? Going up or going down? It's going down by so much, right? How do we calculate that amount? What I did up here is we're at what? 12 minus 10. You guys know it was 2 just like that, right? But on this one, it's just because it's that as a decimal, it's not as a quick and obvious number here. So what we always will do is take that second term, minus it from the per previous term. 12 minus 10, 3 minus 0. So negative 4.5 minus 4.5. Go to your calculator now and punch that in. You're not going to get 0. Do not tell me that's 0 because if you tell me that's 0, then we change nothing. So what do we just say? We're doing a 4.5, which is uh, negative minus 4.5. Type it into your calculator. Check me as well. What does somebody get? You should be getting a change of negative 9. Which makes sense. You told me it's going down, right? Negative. And how much is it going down? Correct. Now let's do that on the other side for the y's. Or sorry, for the x's. Negative 1 to 1. What are our eyes doing from negative 1 to 1? It's going up, right? So what I'm again doing there is the second one minus the first one. What happens right here with the 1 minus a negative 1? Yeah, it becomes a positive 2. So as I type that into my calculator, you should be doing the same thing. That's where I'm getting that 2 from. Okay, how do I write this up? 2 over negative 9 or negative 9 over 2? Rise over 1, negative 9 over 2. Okay. Always the y's over the x's, the rise over the run. Yes, sir, sir. Uh, this plus this? Sure. So what's 4.5 plus a negative 4.5? Do you get 9? So that's where yes and no. Okay. If you were aware of what's going on, then you can do what you're just saying. I know some of us struggle with the arithmetic. So that's where I will keep always saying you need to take this one minus the previous one. Okay, but if you can realize that in your head, that's what we just did, right? 
It's just not always quick for all of us. Okay. Let's do one more here, number three. I got a little bit of room on the side here. Let's put number three into a table one more time. And I want you to calculate me that, uh, that slope one more time, rate of change. Now we're back to some nicer numbers. Do I need to use my calculator here? Probably not. Okay. When I write that out in that table, find that change from 0 to 12. What are our eyes doing from 0 to 12? Going yep, going up. And that's where, kind of what Victoria just said, 12 minus 0 is 12. And what are our eyes doing the other one? I'm sorry? Going up as well. Because when I write this out, it's always the second one minus the previous. What happens with those two negatives there? They're about to turn into a positive. And you're not sure, use your calculator. Zero minus a negative one gives me one. It checks out. Now, after that, how do I write this thing up? 12 over 1 or 1 over 12? And what's 12 over 1 reduced down to? Thank you. This is where it's at. Calculating me these slopes from a table. If it's not a table, boom, we just did it right there. Okay. All right, let's continue on with this work. All right, get ready to flip it. Yeah, I'll give you a second there. Got a couple of these to write. So on the next page, we're getting started. We want to determine if it's linear or not. Yes or no. And in just a little bit, in this period, we'll do a mini quiz, and you're going to do one of the questions. We'll do that there as well. Do we have a linear graph there? Or do we have a linear table? Yes or no? That should be fun. So, all right, let's look at the next page then. So on the next page, okay, what we have is what? Uh, scenario, three of those, three equations, three tables, and three graphs. On these, the equations, the tables, and the graphs, you should be able to tell me like that, linear or not. That's all I want to know. So let's quickly do the graph should be the quickest thing out there. Do we have a linear graph? Yes or no? Yes or no? Is that a linear graph? No. no. What is it doing? It's curving up. So this is not linear. Graph B, linear or not? Yeah. Yep. And what do we know is true about the slope of that graph? Positive or negative? negative. Thank you. All right, this is the funky one. I got a head shake and no, Chloe. Why are you shaking your head no, Chloe? Okay, so here's the funky one. It's vertical. And back in the beginning of the year, one of the very first things we talked about was, is it a function or not? And when we drag this across, what did we say here? Does it make a function? Yes or no? Yeah. Correct. You are correct on that. This is not a function. Now, here's the thing about this. It's in this... Um, it's in the linear family, but it's kind of the black sheep. It's considered to be not a function. Okay, It's in part of the linear family. Clearly, it's a line. But because it's a vertical line, we say it's not a function. This dude was. This is a decreasing linear function. But this is the oddball out. Okay, We all know the oddball in the family. Is it your the oddball? I don't know. Okay. It's me. As Keel saying it's me. That's probably true. All right, the next quickest one should be is the equations. Now, when we keep saying linear equation, we want equations to look like, if we go back to the beginning of the year, when we said we were a part of that linear family, and as we've walked throughout this school year now, I want it to look something like that. I want to see just x. x to the first means it's linear. Anything with x other than x in there, x squared, where is that x located? Is it a power or is it not? Those are different families. So if I have something that resembles that, we say we're linear. So equation A, does it kind of resemble that? X to the first, so that is a, yes, that is a linear function there. Because of x to the first, that's what I want. Do I see another x to the first here? No, we're, that x is the exponent, right? And when we said that happens, we said it's not linear. Anybody remember what that's a family of? It's in the exponent, right? So, yeah, it can't get any more clear than that to be exponential. These questions we're going over, I'm going to quiz you up on that for the final. Okay? So it's nice to have a review for the final. And that last one, it's meant to be not meant to be a trick question. But Chloe's giving me the thumbs up here. 
It is. Now, does that look exactly like this one or even like that one? No. But I'm looking for that x, and what's got that for an exponent? x to the, whoops, there's still just a 1 there. And that 1 is, no matter what we do with it, is still going to be linear. Okay? Um, what if I gave you one that was this? Remember what y equals x squared is? It's not the absolute value, because absolute value, we need to see those bars, right? It's, uh, she's got the pencil going. It's U-shaped, which we call a... I'll take it, Ari. I'll take it. It's a quadratic. Okay. Close enough. If it was multiple choice, it's still probably be better. All right, and then the other one was this dude right here. And that one is what we call the absolute value. Uh, now, with those other ones, as Victoria was back there, she was doing the U-shaped. And what did the absolute value look like? V for value. And we just said a second ago, the exponential one is that curve. And that was letter B. So remember when we see those curves, there's a whole bunch of options to draw that curve. That was exponential. Okay? All right, that sounds good. Then the quick, the other last one here should be the tables. Let's do what we did a few minutes ago on the other side, what we did last week. <coughs> Excuse me. Do we have a linear function here or not? All right. So let's take a look here. How much am I increasing by? Plus one. Plus one. How much am I increasing by? Plus one. I need to see consistency there, and I also need to see consistency here. How much are we increasing by? I'm sorry? Plus, yeah. Are we changing at all? No. I don't think we ran into one of these yet. So this one's going to get funky. All right. I heard a yeah. I heard this is a linear function. But I'm going to pause on this one. I'm going to do a quick side conversation with you. All right. If I was to plot these three points out, I'm going to use this down here, this graph. Where is 1, 3 located? 1, 3 would be what? Like right here? Where is 1, 4 located? Above it, right? Where is 1, 5 located? What type of line am I getting? A vertical line, right? And what do we just say about vertical lines? It's in the linear family, but it is not. So on this one right here, even though the IC plus 1 and plus 0, which is consistent, it's at 0 that's screwing things up. It's at plus 0 on the x's. Now we're not going to do a lot of talk about it. They threw in a kind of a curveball here, but it should be not a linear. Okay, now that I threw that curveball in here, what about the next one? Plus uh, how much? Uh, yeah, this one's a plus zero. Well, crap, there's that zero again. But how much do we do on the x's this time? So let's do one more side conversation. Now that maybe I uh, crush your confidence there in that first one, how about the second one here? Let's see if I plotted these points. What if I go, whoops, what if I go plot 3, 1? I'm going to do a different color here. 3, 1. What's the next one? Where's 4, 1? Now, what type of line am I hiding, creating here? Linear, but what type? Vertical or horizontal? Is horizontal okay? Yes, it is. So, on this one, this is a linear function. That zero throws things off. It can't be in the x's, but it can be in the y's. Last one there, table C. How much are we increasing by? 45. No, we're not increasing, are we? We are decreasing. 30 minus 45 is. And then I decreased again, right? Am I seeing negative 15 there? So far, so good. And what am I seeing on the other side? Am I adding or subtracting there? Yeah, I'm mean going from negative 9 up to negative 8. That's a plus 1. Negative 8 to negative 7 is a. Do we look good then? Based off what we talked about last week, we see that consistency, all is right with the world. Maybe. How do I write that out? 
1 over negative 15 or negative 15 over 1? Thank you very much. That's what I want to hear. Okay. So <clears throat> some of those are very quick to identify. Those a little bit longer. And the ones that are probably very difficult to identify are the work problems, which luckily that's what we're going to do this week, even though you don't like it. Okay. So I'm not going to worry too much about these word problems. All right, well, we're going to talk about these in the course this week. So let's get into this. Let's talk about the next page. All right, let's take this. We're not doing anything different. Let's do number one, letter A. What I want you to do is determine if it's a linear function or not. But when you look at this table, and you compare it to what we just been talking about last week and on the other page, what jumps out to you with that, those tables? What's that, Chloe? I'm sorry. The decimals jump out. That's a problem. But we get our calculators. We can deal with that. And what's some other things that maybe jump out to you? Bless you. How are we increasing? Are we increasing consistently? Uh, by, by, by plus one, I should say? No. That's what we have been doing is by plus one. And that's a little bit off. And then what I see over here, we're increasing by maybe like what? A plus two? So that's a little bit off. No big deal. All right, so what we want to go through here and, and deal with is trying to find still that consistency off of that same plus whatever, plus whatever on both sides, or minus whatever we might be doing. And then things get even funkier when we look down below that next table we're about to talk about, question two. What's going on with question two? Uh, yes, pretzels, are they making you thirsty? Well, no. You don't want science though. You're too old. Or sorry, too young for science though. So anyway, right here, I just see a jumble of numbers. Nothing kind of jumps out at me like that. So we got our workout coming up for us today. So let's go back up. Let's talk about that table. All right, let's do this. 5.5 .5 to 4.75. What are we doing? Going up or going down? We're going down. Now, checking this out, this is where our calculator comes into play. Whoops. It's the second number minus the first number. Now, I know we are good to go do that, some of that in our heads. But if not, we can always check yourself. Let's plug into our calculator. Okay, so everybody's got your calculators. 4.75, the second number, minus that first number. You said negative something, and did somebody get negative 0 0.75? Okay, let's go to the next one. What are we doing here? 4.75 down to 4. We are doing, yep, now that one might be easier to see, but you got your calculators. We can type it in exactly as we go. Checks out again, negative, what, 0 0.75. How about the next one? We're going down, and I'm to keep subtracting. There's nothing new. 3.25 minus 4 is negative 0 0.75. Okay. How about the x's? Got to check there now. What are we doing from negative 2 to 1? We're going up. And if you're not sure by adding 3, second minus the first. 1 minus a negative 2. 1 minus a negative 2, plug it into your calculator, and you get a positive 3. All right. How about 1 to 4? 3. How about 4 to 7? Do I have consistency appearing? Now, how do we write this thing up? Point se negative 0.75 over 3, or 3 over negative 0.75? Negative. I'm going to write right below the table. Bless you again. All right. Let's talk about one of our kind of cardinal rules here, cardinal sins in math. We don't write decimals and fractions together like that. So let's see if our calculator can do the work for us. Type in exactly what we just wrote down. Negative 0. 0.75. Well, I'm going to try this again. Point, uh, what would you say? 75? Negative 0. 0.75. Zero. There it goes. Uh, what are we divided by? Three. Do we get a nice number? Yeah, not bad, is it? Okay. Always reduce that down. Negative 0.25 is what we got then. 
That number is 0.25, the fraction equivalent, if your calculator returned that to you, which some of yours might, is also negative 1 fourth. And I will take absolutely either one. Okay? So, is this new at all? No. We got some crappier numbers to work with now. We got calculators. Use them. Let's repeat that on the other one. What are we doing from 5 to 13? <coughs> Excuse me. 5 to 13. Yeah, it appears we're going up by 8. So, again, what I'm doing in my head is 13 minus 5, 8. How about 13 to 21? Uh, so, 21 minus 13 is, yep, 8. 29 to 21. There's an 8. Okay. That on the left side, you gotta check those X's, gotta check those sides, please. Zero to two. Uh, what are we doing? Two to four is? Four to eight is a? And right there, what happens? Do we have that consistency? No. So what do we say? Linear function or not? Correct. Not a linear function. Now, if we say not a linear function, then you cannot identify the slope. We don't have that consistency right there to put it as negative 0.753. You're going to put it what? 8 over 2 or 8 over 4? You can't pick one or the other. So we say not a linear function and you can't write the slope. Okay? So that's what we're going to keep focusing on with now some more props. So let's take a look at these pretzels. All right. On number 2 down here. All right, whenever you ever going to use this, it's math. And whenever you ever going to use this, well, good chance a lot of you are probably won't. But in terms of how does this apply, definitely in businesses is also where it applies. Okay. So <clears throat> here, Dylan, Dylan sells pretzels at festivals on weekends. Say that five times fast. Dylan sells pretzels at festivals on weekends. The table shown is a record of past sales. So the first weekend he sold what? 15 pretzels made $37.5. Next weekend, a little bit better business, 42 pretzels, $105. 58 pretzels, $145. Then the next weekend, not as good, 29 pretzels all sold. What does this tell you about <coughs> excuse me, his sales? And that's where you want that calculator back out. Okay? All right. So off of here, okay, we want to do kind of get an idea of uh, how much money is he making off of pretzels and then trying to do an idea out of hey, if you want to keep this business going uh, what does 75 pretzels give you? Or if I want to make $500 how many pretzels am I going to need to have on hand to sell? Those type of things. Alright, so here on this one we're going to take a look here. Let's go ahead and calculate me a change. Okay. 37.5 to 105. What are I doing? Going up or down? So I'm going to go to my calculator and do 105 minus, what is it? 37. Let me move this to the side a bit so I can get some room there. 37 and a half. Go to that calculator, punch it in. So I get 67.5. And then on the left side, how much are we going from 40, 15 to 42? That's a change of plus 27. Okay. Now, let's do another pair. And then we're going to talk, kind of come back around to this. Let's go do those two bottom rows uh, 145 to 72 and a half. So I'm doing going up or going down on that. I'm going to go down, so I'm going to go to my calculator and do the second number minus the previous number. And I get negative 72.5. And what about the other one? 58 to 29. How much is it from 58 to 29? And is it going up or down? We're going down 29, right? Do I see consistency up there? Definitely don't. But that doesn't always mean anything because we get a jumbled mix of numbers. So here's what I now want to do, and we'll talk, try to bring this all back around together. What I want to do is I'm going to take those ones in blue that I did, 
and I'm going to write this up as 67.5 over 27. Go to my calculator, type that in. What is that? Uh, whoops. What is that uh, number going to give you? 67.5 divided by 27. So maybe 2.5. Okay. Now do that same thing for me, but for my red one. What have we got? Negative 72.5 divided by negative 29. What is it? 72.5, negative 72.5 divided by what? Negative 29, and what did we get there? Also 2.5, right? So, completely different numbers, right? And we both got 2.5. So what would you say then off of this table? Is it linear or not? Did you get to the same slope? Same slope, 2.5, right? So because we're still getting that same, what we call this rate of change, this is a linear table. Would it look linear off of just a glance at it from what we've kind of seen in the last week or so? I would have said not. So what this is telling me here is, all right, that uh, Dylan, Dylan here makes, come on, Dylan here makes two dollars and fifty cents per pretzel. Okay, so this is what happens kind of actually in the real world. You're not going to see these nice numbers that give you some easy to calculate slopes. You're going to get a jumble mix. Some days you're selling really well. Some days it's cold outside and nobody's coming out. So you're not going to sell as well. Okay? But if we started kind of taking this as a whole, plotting it out, we would see this trend of he's making two and a half dollars a pretzel. So by knowing that, okay, what we now have is an equation. Let's go back to, like, I don't know, a month or two ago when we started talking about lines and reviewing things. That linear function, that function form we kept saying AX plus B, right? AX plus B. So here, AX plus B. How much you sell per pretzel or how much you make per pretzel, that is your slope that we calculated, okay? When we go through and run through those numbers, that's always the slope you're calculating. And what number represents the slope, the A or the B? A is your slope. Okay. Now, plus, this is where things get tricky. We're going to spend some time on it this week. I'm just going to leave it for you and say right there at that equation. Okay. At the x equals 2.5. We're going to assume that you start off with no money. You're starting off with zero dollars. Okay? And then you start selling pretzels at 2.5, sorry, selling pretzels at two dollars and fifty cents each. Okay? With that now, how much money would we make at 75 pretzels? We're selling at 2.5 each. This is back to our calculator, like we said. What is 2.5 times 75? How much money we got? 187 and 50 cents. Okay. Stripped down version of how the business operates. Not at all quite what it looks like because we'll talk more about that tomorrow, the next couple days. Okay. Maybe I just put yourself out by that. Okay. Give me a second, let's pause, and we'll look at the other side real quick. Okay. Let's do one more here. And let's take a look at Delaney here. And I'll go back. Sorry if I have a couple of you still writing there. Let's take a look at the next one. Read that first one up at the top, number three, I think it is. Now, if you look at that table, glancing at that table again, it's just hard to sometimes determine if it's linear there or not. Now, all the ones that we're doing here on these word problems, I'm just going to sure tell you, they're going to be linear. What I want you to be able to do for me is can you calculate me that slope starting there? So, Let's go back and let's read through Delaney then. And her friends recently went to the community fair. Think about you yourself going to a, a carnival or anything. 
you had to pay an entrance fee and then purchase one ticket for each ride. Okay, that makes sense. We've been to different places that do that. Dakota is going to the fair tomorrow and wants to know the cost of each ride. The lady and her friends help Dakota by writing down how much money they spent and the number of tickets they purchased. Why in the world would anybody do that? I think we all need but you guys know these are math word problems, so they don't always make a lot of sense. All right. What does this table tell you about the cost to go to the fair and the rides? So that's going to allow us to calculate the slope. And that's going to allow us to calculate the cost per ride. So let's do that. Pick two numbers. Right here, these first two numbers. How much do you go from 7.5 to 9? I'm going up or going down? And the way I'm calculating it is the second one minus the first one. Go to that calculator of yours, punch it in. Check me as well. We should be getting what? 1.5? 9 minus 7.5 gives me 1.5. Now go do the other the column. You gotta get how much it changed on the x's. How much does it change from 2 to 4? It's a plus 2, right? 4 minus 2 is 2. That's all we need now. Now we have our slope. 1.5 over 2. Go to your calculator, type it in. 1.5 divided by 2, survey says. 0 0.75. So what does that mean? How much does each ride cost? Each ride costs, yep, 75 cents. Now, the other thing with this one is each ride costs 75 cents. But what else do we have to pay in there as well? An entrance fee, right? All right, so let's start writing up this equation here, part A and part B then. I want to keep in mind that AX plus B, you just found that slope. When you calculate that number right here, that's giving you that slope. That's giving you that A value. But we also have out there the cost of the entrance fees. How did I go figure out that? But we're right now where we're at, there's just not an easy way here. So I'm going to go with, I don't say at all it's not obvious, but I'm going to play this game of taking this table backwards a bit. And what I mean by that here is, when you walk into that carnival, you pay down the entrance fee. How many rides have you rode? None. So what I want to figure out is, that part of the table. Let's take this backwards. Okay. From 0.75 right here. To go backwards, what's 7.5 minus 0.75? That's one ride. You told me one ride costs 75 cents. So 7.5 minus what? 0.75? Ah, I know. I hate that. Uh, yes, you should be getting 6.75. All right. Every ride costs 75 cents. So that was what we just paid right there. One ride, we paid $6.75. But that includes your entrance fee. Let's go back one more time to zero rides. Subtract out another 75 cents. What is 6.75? Minus 0.75. Go to your calculator and you get $6. So, what that means here is it costs you how much to get into the fair? $6 to get into that fair. So, there we're going to say cost is $6 to get in. We've all been there before at a carnival. You have to pay the entrance fee. Then how much per ride? Victor? Wait a minute. Let's finish this up first. Okay. So what that also means is our equation. Way, not way back when, but a while ago, we had done all that work with temperature. Measuring the temperature at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. And then a temperature that goes up or down. And we said that B value is where you started recording your temperature at uh, that specific time. Here in this instance, you got to pay $6. If you ride no rides, you're still out $6, right? If you start riding rides, you're going to be out a few bucks more. 
So $6 plus some change, however many rides we ride. So this is the equation then that is working for this fare. So if you go to any carnivals that does that same thing, of an entrance fee plus how much you gotta pay per ride, mathematically that's what's happening. Are you thinking like that? If no, why would you? But this is what is happening mathematically. Dakota's got 20 bucks. So your mom gave you 20 bucks for the fare today. Cool. How many rides can you do? So you got 20 bucks. Sounds like a lot. The, how much? <laughs> bless you. How much are you already out? Six bucks. So where do you actually have at? How much money do you actually have for rides? You only got $14 really to spend. So you got $20 to start off with. Cool. But you don't really have $20, do you? Because you got to take away that entrance fee. So you're only dealing with $14. And what does each ride cost you? 0.75. So we've done a little bit of equations work. How do we get rid of that 0.75? What's the inverse there? Add, multiply, divide, subtract. What are we going to do? We are going to divide it because what's in between that 0.75 and the variable? There's multiplication hiding there. And now we go to our calculator. What's 14 divided by 0.75? How many rides can we do? Four, okay, so give me a second there. 14 <laughs> divided by 0 0.75. Yeah, 18.666. So where do we round that to? We can't ride 0.6 of a ride. 18 rides or 19 rides? 19, 19 rides? All right. So let's think about this. Every uh, ride is 75 cents, right? Just humor me. What's 19 rides times 0.75? Crap, if I have to, helps if I type it in right. 19 times 0 0.75, is that more or less than $14? Do I have enough money for four, over that? So where are we actually rounding that one to? This is the weird one where it makes sense to round that up to 19, because what was it? 18.666, I think. That makes sense around to 19. But because this is a word problem, it doesn't work out that way, does it? You don't have enough money for that extra ride. So really, how many rides can we do? We can only do 18 rides. You're going to be short 25 cents. Hopefully your buddy's got 25 cents. Okay? That's day one of word problems. I know you love word problems. You can't contain your excitement there. But we're going to do more with it tomorrow, the next day, and so on. Each day gets a little bit better. Okay? So that kind of pauses that. Give everybody a second to just kind of, uh, oh, that's what I'm looking for. Pause. Just Let's get ready here. We're going to do a wrap-up, a warm-up here that is in preparation for that mini-quiz. And then after the mini-quiz, it will be yours to work on the assignment. So I'll give you a minute here. I'm going to pass these out to you. This is what our um, mini quiz is about to be over. What we just talked about, no, that's not on there. It's going to be looking like this, and it's going to be looking like that. Okay, so give you all just kind of a minute. Victor, if you want to go rush real quick here. I'm going to pass out that uh, warm up here. This is what the quiz will be like. We'll take the mini quiz and call it a day. Give you guys a chance to work on that. Oh, you're good. Keep those calculators out, please. So on that mini quiz in just a few minutes, just kind of get your brain down. You're going to lose through a lot. The word problems that we just talked about are not going to be on there. What I will do for you, though, that will be on there is like the back side, that table right there, calculate the rate of change. Is it linear or not? We will do that. But it's the, the table that we saw the last week or so. Okay. So on this one right here, one of the first things that we talked about was taking this formula, rewriting it, 
and putting into that function notation form, that ax plus b. So as we did that last week, all right, we're going to use that skill again, and we're going to test you up on that. And you've got parentheses. So with those parentheses, what number am I going to be distributing here? The negative 10 or the negative 3? Thank you for saying that. What's going to happen to that negative 10 at the moment? Yep, it's just going to drop on down. So as I bring down that negative 10 here, watch your arithmetic, negative 3n, and what's going to be the other number? Plus, thank you, yep, plus 3 right there. Now after that, okay, so I can erase, oops, it does not work like that. Okay, we have like terms that we want to bring together. And this is where your calculator is coming back into play. Negative 10 and 3. What you got, Ari? <laughs> Ladies. So negative 10 plus 3 is giving me what? Negative 7. And negative 3n drops on down. It's not a like term, so it'll bring it together. That answer is great. You're going to look, if this is multiple choice, you're going to look, like, look for the one that has negative 3n minus 7 or negative 3x minus 7. And then if it's not multiple choice, like we've done before, what we'll have is the blank like that. And what you will then type in is what in front of that x? Negative 3, and what goes after the x? Have we done that before? Sure have. Yeah, we have. It's multiple choice, choose the right one. Okay. Uh, on number two, calculators. Put calculator there. So this is what we're going to type it in. Remember, we replace the x as, in this case, 0 using those parentheses. If you are not using those parentheses, your calculator is going to return you something, but it ain't going to be right. So when you type that in, we did all this before. You guys did very well with it. Let's do this again here. Type it into your calculator. Use those parentheses, though. Desmos, whatever you're using. Somebody, would you get that first one? You better be getting 10. Now on the second one, somebody typed it in. What did you guys get? You should be getting 30. What's going on there is negative times negative is a positive 20. And 20 plus 10 gives me that 30. Right? Calculate as your buddy. We just got to tell you calculate how to use it. Okay, that's what it gives you up on. Flip it if you haven't done so to the back. And let's look at the back then. Do we have a linear table or not? So on number three here, this is where we're going to be doing just what we did again today. How are we changing? How we go from negative five to negative seven? And then add or subtract. Oh, good. Yeah, we're going down, right? Going down by how much? Two. Again, what I am doing in my head is this right here. It's the second number minus the first number. If you type that into your calculator, your calculator is going to return a negative 2. And I repeat that to see if I, if I can see that negative 2 appear. Negative 7 to negative 9, what's that doing? Also going down by, yeah. And then for the last one, do I see that negative 2 appear again? So far, so good. But as we've seen before, I check the y's, I check the x's. 2, 3, 4, 5. What are we doing? So that should be a quick check right there. And if I ask you now, yes or no, will well, you going to select linear or not? Yes, it's linear. Now, if I ask the follow-up question, what's the slope, the rate of change? How do we write this up? 1 over negative 2 or negative 2 over 1? Thank you. That sounds very nice. Who cares if it's a table or if it's a graph? You guys are used to graphs. On the graphs, rise and run, make the triangle. We've done that before. That's nothing new. Right? <clears throat> right? Oh, right. <laughs> Rate of change is the slope. What are eyes doing? Positive or negative slope? Negative. So let's go calculate that negative. Fault. Give me the directions. What are you doing to go from point to point? Down and to the right. And when we say go down, that is negative. And we say go to the right, that is. And I better see that negative 2 over 2 keep happening, those nice steps. 
How do I write that up? Negative 2 over 2 or 2 over negative 2? And always reduce that down. What's negative 2 over 2 become? Negative 1. Which makes sense because what do you say your eyes are doing? A negative slope does that for us. Okay. That's what we're going to close you up on here now. Okay. Again, it's a mini quiz. It's not going to make or break you one way or the other this time of the year. So if you do well with it, cool. You're on the right track. If you don't want to do well with it, do well with it. That's fine. Let's get this question asked and asked and answered this week. All right. The scores will release to you. A mini quiz will automatically release to you. If you realize you're like, hey, this answer, my answer looks exactly the same. I'll look at those uh, answers again like I usually do. It's just a tentative score. Maybe the scoring got screwed up. I'll look at those later on. Okay. Let's get your Chromebooks out. Pull up the class calendar. Go to today's date, which is November 11th. Uh, okay, let's get out your Chromebooks, pull the mini quiz for today, go to the class calendar, which is November 14th, it's the link right there, Desmos has been able, or you also got the calculators, if you let you follow them, you got them right there as well. As you guys are working on that, I'm going to walk around and pass out the assignments for you today to focus on. Good luck, everybody. Take your time. Keep quiet.